Omnia recently released its results for the year ending March 2021, which was better than expected given the current operating time as well as the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Could you just talk me through um, or maybe give me a brief overview of these results and I mean, and why they were touted as, you know, better than expected? If we just take a step back for a minute, you know, Omnia has been through a very difficult, tough phase over the last two years, um, you know, a, a chunk of debt and uh, a, a process to uh, execute on a rights issue. And then over the last period, actually paying down the debt. So I think what the market was looking for was to see how we as a management team could deliver on our promises. And uh, as at the end of March, what you see is a nice rebasing of our, of our business. Firstly, uh, we're in a net cash position. So uh, 1.3 billion of, of, of net cash, uh, which shows that our debt has been extinguished. Our debt has been extinguished due to two things. One, uh, the, the sale of our, our agri business, but more importantly, the cash being generated out of our, out of our core business. Uh, what we were also able to do was pay a dividend. So we paid in total uh, around a billion rands worth of dividend. Um, uh, a two rand ordinary dividend uh, and a four rand uh, special dividend. And I think, uh, you know, the the operational performance, uh, the shoring up of our balance sheet even further, and then finally the dividend is, is what caused uh, the market to smile. You've spearheaded the company's turnaround strategy. I mean, that can't have been easy, especially with the, you know, the pandemic and everything that's been going on surrounding that. Could you talk to us on how you approached this um, during this time? And I mean, and what goals had you, had you initially set to, to reach? There were three things, uh, you know, we focused on and the board and the management spoke about. The first uh, goal was to, to stabilise uh, and safeguard our company. Uh, you know, we're a company that started in 1953, uh, over 4,000 people in 25 countries, uh, you know, uh, 17 uh, odd, uh, almost 18 billion rands worth of turnover involved with the livelihoods uh, of so many thousands and thousands of people and involved in food production and mining and primary chemicals. So the first phase was to stabilize the company, make sure the company was safe, make sure the balance sheet was safe and, and, and secure. And I think that phase we can, uh, you know, proudly say we've been able to achieve. And uh, the result of that is paying, you know, this dividend of, uh, of a billion rand. The second phase was uh, fixing, uh, restructuring, uh, re-looking at all of our assets, uh, our returns on those assets, our expenses, our working capital, our cash, uh, and our capital management. Um, and that heavy lifting has been going on for, uh, uh, you know, probably quite firmly in the last year. And we've achieved fairly well in that space. You know, you see our operating profit going up uh, 60 odd percent. Uh, you see our cash being generated uh, fairly well. But there's still a lot of work to do there. I think there's still value we can generate for our shareholders by increasing our returns. Finally, and I guess the phase that we're in now, which is the third goal, or the third phase, you know, we, we term that internally, maybe reset or renew and grow. So, you know, a company that has gone through the amount of change that we have, it needs a little bit of time to settle down, uh, to make sure our people, our culture, our ways of doing things are, 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 are almost in a way, uh, uh, you know, made, um, made the norm in our business. And that allows us a fairly firm, foundation to grow off. Um, so we, we're spending a bit of time now uh, moving things around, uh, increasing our, our bench strength, um, developing our people, focusing on our talent. And that is also quite difficult work because there's a, a lot of change needed there. Um, and then, you know, uh, in parallel to that, um, we're entering an, a little bit of a growth phase. So I think what, uh, you know, three parts or three big uh, themes stabilize, you know, restructure, reorganize, fix things, you know, and then reset and, and grow. And I think, you know, we're probably firmly into this reset, renew, grow phase, um, you know, where we're not concerned about stability, we're not concerned about disappearing, but we're more concerned about the returns on our capital and our focus and our bench strength around uh, growing the business. And I think that growth 
you know, if you, if you think of a target, it's probably five, 10, 15 years. So we've got to start thinking much longer term. So those were the things we set out to do. And I, and I think we can proudly say that we've achieved, you know, the first bit, uh, but we've still got a lot to do in the second um, and third bit uh, of resetting and growing the business. I'd like to just touch on the, the start of your agri business and your, your growth prospects for the, you know, the, the foreseeable future. I mean, this, the start of your agri business obviously leaves the company in a fairly cash flash position. And, you know, I mean, are you on the prowl for any suitable acquisitions? I mean, what, what, how are you, how are you approach, yeah. uh, approaching this? Omnia's business, there are three core businesses that we've got. It's agriculture, mining and chemicals. And the business we sold was Oro Agri. Um, that is a, uh, it was part of our agriculture uh, segment. It was a business that uh, we bought uh, a few years ago for 100 million US. Uh, that business was based in a, a few territories across the world. And it was in a fast growing business, in a highly frag, uh, a fast growing sector of the market, um, a sector that is highly fragmented with huge amount of opportunity and huge amount of risk. And I guess, uh, you know, in, in looking at, uh, at an offer that we had for that business and in weighing up uh, the potential and the risks, uh, we felt that the offer uh, made sense for us to be accepted and we followed a process uh, to dispose of that business. Um, that doesn't mean that we're not committed to agriculture. Agriculture is certainly the largest part of uh, work. A, you know, a large part, uh, probably a third, slightly more than a third of, uh, of Omnia. And the agri-bio market is still an important part of our market. We've got a business uh, which is very similar to uh, Oro Agri that we sold, a business based in Australia, uh, which uses a, sort of U, a source of U-mate uh, to create a biostimulant. And it also uses that in coatings that we take to uh, the Brazilian, Australian uh, market and into northern parts of the African continent. Um, so, you know, having disposed of Aura Agri does not mean we're not committed to uh, the fast growing agri bio market. We have got other businesses in that space. Uh, we will consider um, acquisitions in, uh, in our agriculture and our mining business, but we will consider those based on, uh, on leveraging our core strengths and capabilities. Um, I think the sale of this business puts us in a strong position uh, to refocus our company, you know, and to uh, focus on, on growing uh, relative to our core strengths and growing in a way that enhances the return, the long-term return uh, of capital on capital for, for our shareholders. So agriculture is an incredibly important part of our business. Uh, we are absolutely committed uh, to the agriculture market, you know, agriculture, which generates food security. And we all know that people uh, need to be fed. We know that in times of the pandemic, how difficult supply chains are and how difficult it is uh, to get uh, food security uh, and, and, uh, and production uh, to, to, to continue. So uh, we will continue to play a big role in, in agriculture. Um, and I'm sure what you will see in the coming uh, few years is expansion in our agriculture business uh, and expansion in the in the um, value chain uh, chains that we operate uh, in agriculture, and perhaps uh, you know you will also see some or you will see certainly organic, but you will also see inorganic growth uh, in that part of our business. The COVID nineteen pandemic is still with us today, unfortunately. How did Omnia deal with the pandemic and the subsequent challenges from both an employee and culture perspective? The pandemic clearly has had a profound impact on businesses and people across the world. You know, there's, there's probably three areas that the pandemic impacted Omnia. The first, uh, you know, is around people. Um, and I think there are two uh, pieces to that. The one is um, people's life, uh, people's uncertainty, and, and really our focus on ensuring that we, we treat uh, the, the, the people aspect of the pandemic with the required significance it deserves. So the first thing we did was to help our people uh, either work from home uh, or to create an environment where people were able to distance, uh, to sanitize, um, you know, increase the number of shifts so, uh, so people can come off and we can clean uh, deep clean areas 
um, and continue operating. Um, the second part of the people perspective, and I think we're seeing more of that now, is actually the psychological impacts of the pandemic and the psychological impacts of working from home, the psychological impacts of having people uh, die or really, really sick is, is very significant. And I think more and more as a world, we need to take care of our people and be kind to them during this pandemic. I think the third part of it, which is uh, the bigger part that has impacted uh, the business operations, so the bigger part impacting the business operations was around supply chain. Uh, we saw immense disruptions uh, to supply chain. We saw immense uh, need for food security uh, and for food production, uh, which, which meant that as Omnia, we had to be incredibly diligent to ensure that we can uh, make, produce, uh, and supply fertilizer um, and the different uh, services we offer to the agriculture se sector, but also to ensure that we could focus more heavily on, uh, on, it, on, on delivering uh, explosives uh, to the mining sector so that as those sectors uh, closed and opened, you know, we were able to supply explosives. I think the final part of our business, which is a really, really important part uh, in terms of life and creating life and sustaining life, uh, was our chemicals business, you know, where we involved in water treatment and a chunk of primary chemicals for cleaning, uh, food, uh, and the manufacturing sector. And all through that, you know, we focused on agilely moving our supply chain around and making sure where there were customer demand, we were able to supply into, into that demand. So I think the agility of our team, uh, the focus of our supply chain, you know, has really resulted in us uh, having a very resilient performance through the pandemic. Clearly, most of our businesses, in fact, almost all of them are essential services. So they continue to operate across the world as, uh, as lockdowns are implemented and, and lifted. And you see that in, uh, you know, you can take our revenue number. You know, our revenue number through the pandemic has been flat, uh, which, is a, which is a really great performance in very, very difficult, uh, difficult times.